Welcome to the 2023 CDL Hazmat Practice Test. This test has 60 questions with explained answers to help you prepare for this test. Before we get started, don't forget to jumpstart that like button to keep this channel running. Now here is your CDL instructor to walk you through the question. Question one. Is it accurate that regulated products are listed both in the hazardous materials table and the regulated products table? A. True. B. False. C. Partially true. D. Sometimes true. The correct answer is B. False. No, it is not true that regulated products appear on both the hazardous materials table and the regulated products table. Regulated products are typically listed in the hazardous materials table, which provides information about hazardous materials and their transportation regulations. The regulated products table, on the other hand, contains information about specific products subject to regulation, but not all regulated products are listed there. Question 2. Is it accurate that each item description on a shipping paper includes the hazard class of the material? A. True. B. False. C. Partially true. D. Sometimes true. The correct answer is A. True. Yes, it is true that each item description on a shipping paper should include the hazard class of the material being transported. This information is essential for proper identification, communication of risks, and compliance with hazardous materials, transportation, regulations. Question 3. Is it accurate that a vehicle displaying placards is required to have placards affixed on the front, rear, and both sides? A. True. B. False. C. Partially true. D. Not applicable. The correct answer is A. True. Placarded vehicles carrying hazardous materials are mandated to display placards on the front, rear, and both sides of the vehicle ensuring clear visibility and proper identification of the hazardous contents being transported. Question 4. Is it accurate that you should store your shipping papers describing hazardous materials in a pouch under the passenger seat? A. True. B. False. C. Partially true. D. Sometimes true. The correct answer is B. False. No, it is not true that you should keep your shipping papers describing hazardous materials in a pouch under the passenger seat. Shipping papers should be readily accessible to the driver and kept in a designated location, like the driver's door pouch, or a similar secure and easily reachable location. Question 5. Is it accurate that if the phrase inhalation hazard is present on the shipping papers, you must utilize poison placards alongside any other required for the product? A. True. B. False. C. Mostly true. D. Partially true. The correct answer is A. True. Yes, it is true that if the words inhalation hazard are indicated on the shipping papers, you must display poison placards in addition to any other placards needed for the specific hazardous material being transported. This helps communicate the potential respiratory risk associated with the material, ensuring proper identification and safety measures. Question 6. What documentation must a driver have for the transfer of Class A and B explosives? A. Proof of insurance. B. Vehicle registration. C. Medical certificate. D. Route plan. The correct answer is D. Route plan. When transferring Class a and B explosives, a driver must possess written instructions that include a route plan. This plan outlines the specific route to be taken, ensuring the safe and secure transport of these hazardous materials and minimizing potential risks. Question 7. What is the proper practice when dealing with packages of explosives? A. Use hooks or metal tools for convenience. B. Never use hooks or other metal tools. C. Wear gloves at all times. D. Store them in a warm area. The correct answer is B. Never use hooks or other metal tools. When handling packages of explosives, it is crucial to avoid using hooks or other metal tools, as these can create sparks and potential ignition sources. Using non-sparking, non-metallic tools 
and following appropriate safety procedures is essential to prevent accidents. Question 8. How can you determine whether a shipment contains a hazardous product? A. Consult with your co-driver. B. Open the package for inspection. C. Check the vehicle's odometer. D. Look at the shipping papers. The correct answer is D. Look at the shipping papers. To ascertain whether a shipment includes a hazardous product, you should refer to the shipping papers. These documents provide essential information about the contents of the shipment, including whether they are hazardous materials. Question 9. A vehicle is loaded with 500 pounds each of explosive A and B. According to federal regulations, what type of placards must be displayed on the vehicle? A. Flammable gas placards. B. Explosive A placards. C. Corrosive placards. D radioactive placards? The correct answer is B. Explosive A placards. When transporting both explosive A and explosive B materials, the vehicle must be placarded with explosive A placards, as the most hazardous material determines the required placarding. Question 10. Who bears the responsibility of ensuring that the shipper has accurately named, labeled, and marked a hazardous material shipment? A. Carrier. B. Inspector. C. Dispatcher. D. Driver. The correct answer is A. Carrier. The carrier is tasked with the responsibility of verifying that the shipper has correctly identified, labeled, and marked the hazardous materials shipment in accordance with the regulations before accepting and transporting the cargo. Question 11. Which warning signals are permissible to indicate a halted vehicle carrying a flammable liquid? A. Colored flags. B. Reflective triangles. C. Flashing lights. D. Hand signals. The correct answer is B. Reflective triangles. Reflective triangles can be employed to warn other road users of a stationary vehicle transporting a flammable liquid. These triangles enhance visibility and promote safety by alerting approaching drivers to the presence of a potential hazard. Question 12. When transporting hazardous materials, you are required to halt your vehicle and inspect any dual tires at least once every blank or after traveling blank, whichever occurs first. A. One hour or 50 miles. B. Four hours or 200 miles. C. 6 hours or 300 miles. D. 2 hours or 100 miles. The correct answer is D. 2 hours or 100 miles. To ensure safety while transporting hazardous materials, you must pause your vehicle and assess the condition of dual tires at least once every 2 hours or after covering a distance of 100 miles, whichever comes first. Question 13. In the basic description of a hazardous product, which element is required to be listed first on the shipping papers among the hazard class, identification number, and proper shipping name? A. The hazard class. B. The identification number. C. The quantity of the material. D. The proper shipping name. The correct answer is D. The proper shipping name. Among the hazard class, identification number, and proper shipping name, the proper shipping name must be listed as the first element in the basic description of a hazardous product on the shipping papers. Question 14. What is the maximum allowable total transport index for all packages of radioactive material in a single vehicle during transportation? A. 50 B. 75 C. 25 D. 100 The correct answer is A. 50 when transporting radioactive material, the total transport index of all packages contained within a single vehicle must not surpass 50. This ensures that safety standards are upheld during the transportation of radioactive substances. Question 15. You are carrying 2,000 pounds of phosphoric acid. You must avoid parking within blank feet of the roadway unless it's necessary for standard operations for a brief duration. A. 50. B. 5, C, 100, D, 25. 
The correct answer is B. 5. When transporting 2,000 pounds of phosphoric acid, you should not park within 5 feet of the traveled portion of the highway, except when it's required for routine operations and only for a short time. Question 16. Your vehicle is loaded with explosives, oxidizers, or flammables. Smoking is prohibited within blank feet of the vehicle. A. 25 B. 100 C. 10 D. 50 The correct answer is A. 25 When your vehicle is transporting explosives, oxidizers, or flammable materials, smoking is not allowed within 25 feet of the vehicle. This safety measure helps reduce the risk of fire or explosion due to potential ignition sources. Question 17. During the process of fueling a vehicle with placards indicating the transport of hazardous materials, where should someone be located to ensure safety and control? A. In the driver's seat. B. Near the rear of the vehicle. C. At the fueling station cashier. D. At the nozzle, controlling the fuel flow. The correct answer is D. At the nozzle, controlling the fuel flow. While refueling a placarded vehicle carrying hazardous materials, it is crucial for someone to be present at the nozzle, actively managing the fuel flow. This practice enhances safety by allowing immediate response in case of any fuel spills or emergencies. Question 18. You are inspecting a vehicle carrying hazardous cargo. During this inspection, where should the shipping papers be placed for easy visibility? A. Under the dashboard. B. In the driver's door pouch. C. On the passenger seat. D. Inside the glove compartment. The correct answer is B. In the driver's door pouch. While conducting a vehicle inspection with hazardous cargo on board, the shipping papers should be located in the driver's door pouch or another easily accessible and visible spot. This ensures that essential documents are readily available for examination. Question 19. What documentation is required when transporting chlorine in cargo tanks? A. Vehicle maintenance records. B. Daily driver logbook. C. Weather forecast report. D. Hazardous material shipping papers. The correct answer is D. Hazardous material shipping papers. When transporting chlorine in cargo tanks, it's essential to have hazardous material shipping papers. These papers provide crucial information about the hazardous material being transported, aiding in proper handling, emergency response, and regulatory compliance. Question 20. Where should a driver's dated certificate of radioactive materials training be kept? A. In the driver's immediate possession. B. Filed at the carrier's office. C. In the driver's wallet. D. Locked in the glove compartment. The correct answer is A. In the driver's immediate possession. A driver's dated certificate of radioactive materials training must be carried by the driver at all times during transportation and be readily accessible in their immediate possession. This ensures compliance with regulations and the ability to provide documentation if needed. Question 21. If hazardous materials are leaking from your vehicle, what action should you avoid taking? A. Attempting to contain the spill yourself. B calling a hazardous materials disposal team, C, moving the vehicle to a safer location, D, doing more than safety allows. The correct answer is D, doing more than safety allows. In the event of hazardous materials spillage from your vehicle, you should refrain from taking any action that goes beyond what safety considerations permit. Avoid any actions that could potentially exacerbate the situation or compromise safety. Question 22. Who holds the responsibility for packaging, labeling, and preparing the hazardous material shipping documents when transporting with a common carrier? A. Driver. B. Shipper. C. Carrier. D. Receiver. The correct answer is B. Shipper. 
the shipper is responsible for properly packaging, labeling, and preparing the hazardous material shipping papers before handing over the shipment to a common carrier for transportation. Question 23. What does it indicate when an entry on a shipping paper is bold, highlighted, or printed in another color? A. The material is an exempted substance. B. The material is non-hazardous. C. The material is a hazardous material. D. The material is an oversized item. The correct answer is C. The material is a hazardous material. When an entry on a shipping paper is presented with bold, highlighted, or distinct color formatting, it signifies that the material being transported is classified as hazardous. This emphasis draws attention to the critical nature of the cargo for safety and regulatory compliance. Question 24. The threefold intent of the hazardous materials regulations includes ensuring driver and equipment safety, as well as effectively communicating risk. What is the final objective among these three? A. To contain the material. B. To reduce shipping costs. C. To expedite transportation processes. D. To maximize cargo space. The correct answer is A. To contain the material. Alongside promoting safe drivers and equipment and effectively communicating risk, the third aspect of the hazardous materials regulations is to ensure proper containment of the hazardous materials being transported. This contributes to overall safety and environmental protection during transportation. Question 25. Among the following shipping paper descriptions, which one is accurate? A. Hydrogen bromide, flammable gas, UN-1048. B. Hydrogen bromide, corrosive liquid, UN-1048. C. Hydrogen bromide, non-flammable gas, UN-1048. D. Hydrogen bromide, explosive gas, UN-1048. The correct answer is C. Hydrogen bromide, non-flammable gas, UN-1048. Among the given options, hydrogen bromide, non-flammable gas, UN-1048, is the correct and accurate shipping paper description. It precisely represents the hazardous material being transported and its associated hazard class. Question 26. If a 2-liter bottle of material is classified as a flammable liquid and is also identified as having a poison inhalation hazard, which placarding should be used on the vehicle? A. Placard with both poison and flammable symbols. B. Placard with only a poison symbol. C. Placard with only a flammable symbol. D. Placard with only a corrosive symbol. The correct answer is A. Placard with both poison and flammable symbols. When a hazardous material has multiple hazard classifications, the placard on the vehicle should reflect all relevant hazard symbols. In this case, both the poison and flammable symbols should be displayed to accurately represent the material's hazards. Question 27. You are prohibited from parking your vehicle within how many feet of an open flame? A. 100 B. 200 C. 300 D. 400. The correct answer is C. 300. To ensure safety, you should not park your vehicle within 300 feet of an open flame. This distance helps reduce the risk of fire or explosion hazards when hazardous materials are being transported. Question 28. Where should placards be displayed on a vehicle that requires them? A. Front of the vehicle. B. On the rear bumper. C. On the roof of the vehicle. D. Inside the cab. The correct answer is A. Front of the vehicle. Placards indicating the hazardous materials being transported must be displayed on the front of the vehicle. This placement allows emergency responders and other drivers to quickly identify the potential hazards associated with the cargo, ensuring safety and proper handling. Question 29. Within what distance from the vehicle are you, as the driver, permitted to smoke when it is loaded with a flammable liquid? A. 10 feet. B. 25 feet. C. 20 feet. D. 15 feet. The correct answer is B. 25 feet. When a vehicle is loaded with a flammable liquid, you must not smoke within 25 feet of the vehicle to minimize the risk of igniting the flammable material and causing a fire or explosion hazard. 
Question 30. When the shipping papers display an RQ before or after the HEMS description, what does the RQ signify? A. The material is exempt from reporting. B. The carrier must report any spills of this liquid. C. The material is non-hazardous. D. The material has an extended shelf life. The correct answer is B. The carrier must report any spills of this liquid. An RQ, reportable quantity, indicated on the shipping papers in conjunction with the HEMS description, signifies that the carrier is required to report any spills or releases of this liquid substance, as it has the potential to pose environmental or safety risks. Question 31. When your vehicle bears placards, what is the appropriate procedure for navigating railroad crossings? A. Proceed cautiously without stopping or looking. B. Accelerate to cross the tracks quickly. C. Shift gears to a higher speed before crossing the tracks. D. Stop between 15 and 50 feet from the nearest rail. Look both ways. Turn off all noise-producing devices in the truck. When the tracks are clear, cross without shifting any gears. The correct answer is D. Stop between 15 and 50 feet from the nearest rail. Look both ways. Turn off all noise-producing devices in the truck. When the tracks are clear, cross without shifting any gears. If your vehicle is placarded, it's essential to stop at a railroad crossing between 15 and 50 feet from the nearest rail. After stopping, look both ways for approaching trains, turn off noise-producing devices, and then proceed to cross the tracks without shifting gears to ensure a safe passage. Question 32. What action should be taken when the term forbidden is indicated in the hazardous materials class column of an entry in the hazardous materials table? A. The shipper can proceed with packaging and labeling. B. The material can only be transported within the state. C. A common carrier must never transport the product. D. The material can only be transported during daylight hours. The correct answer is C. A common carrier must never transport the product. When the word forbidden appears in the hazardous materials class column of an entry in the hazardous materials table, it signifies that a common carrier should never transport the specified product as it poses significant risks and is not allowed for transportation. Question 33. Where is it permissible to park a vehicle loaded with Class A explosives? A. Only at designated rest areas. B. Only in a safe haven. C. Anywhere with proper placarding. D. Only during daylight hours. The correct answer is B. Only in a safe haven. Vehicles carrying Class A. Explosives can only be parked in designated safe havens to ensure safety and prevent the risk of accidents. Question 34. Is it permissible for you, as a driver, to transport hazardous materials without holding a hazardous materials endorsement on your CDL license? A. Yes, regardless of the amount being transported. B. No, only if you're transporting explosives. C. No, under any circumstances. D. Yes, if the amount on your vehicle requires placards. The correct answer is D. Yes. If the amount on your vehicle does not require placards, you can transport hazardous materials without a hazardous materials endorsement if the quantity being transported does not necessitate the display of placards on your vehicle. Question 35. What are the dimensions of a standard hazardous materials label? A. 3.9 in by 3.9 in. B. 5.5 in by 8.5 in. C. 6 in by 6 in. D. 8.5 in by 11 in. The correct answer is a 3.9 in by 3.9 in. The dimensions of a standard hazardous materials label are 3.9 in by 3.9 in. This size allows for clear visibility and effective communication of essential safety information regarding the hazardous contents of the cargo being transported. Question 36. What are the dimensions of a hazardous materials placard? A. 12 inches by 12 inches. B. 8 inches by 10 inches. C. 10 3 fourths inches turned on end in a diamond. D. 
6 inches by 14 inches? The correct answer is C. 10 3 fourths inches turned on end in a diamond. A hazardous materials placard typically measures 10 3 fourths inches on each side when placed in a diamond orientation. This standardized size ensures clear visibility and recognition for the purpose of identifying the type of hazardous material being transported. Question 37. Who bears the duty of declining delivery of packages that are leaking? A. Driver. B. Carrier. C. Receiver. D. Shipper. The correct answer is A. Driver. The driver is responsible for refusing to accept or transport leaking hazardous materials packages to ensure safety and compliance with regulations. Question 38. Associate the hazardous material with its appropriate class or division. What class does white phosphorus belong to? A. Class 2.1. B. Class 4.2. C. Class 3. D. Class 6.1. The correct answer is B. Class 4.2. White phosphorus is classified as class 4.2, which encompasses substances that are considered pyrophoric, flammable upon contact with air, and pose specific hazards related to their reactivity and flammability characteristics. Question 39. What hazardous material class or division does uranium belong to? A. Class 2. B. Class 4. C. Class 7. D. Class 6. The correct answer is C. Class 7. Uranium is classified under Class 7, which encompasses radioactive materials. This classification is vital for establishing appropriate safety measures during transportation and handling of radioactive substances to prevent potential hazards. Question 40. What is the term used to refer to the document that confirms a shipment has been correctly prepared in accordance with regulations? A. Shipper's Affidavit. B. Carrier's endorsement, C. Hazmat declaration, D. Shipper's certification. The correct answer is D. Shipper's certification. The shipper's certification is a statement on the shipping papers that affirms the shipment's proper preparation following hazardous materials regulations. Question 41 Who is accountable for identifying the appropriate placards to be utilized when shipping a hazardous material product? A. Carrier. B. Driver. C. Shipper. D. Consignee. The correct answer is C. Shipper. The shipper holds the responsibility for determining and applying the correct placards that accurately reflect the nature of the hazardous material being transported. This ensures that the hazards associated with the shipment are effectively communicated to others on the road and to emergency responders if needed. Question 42. How would you describe the placard used for non-flammable gases? A. Red lettering and logo on a white background. B. White lettering and logo on a green background. C. Black lettering and logo on an orange background. D. Yellow lettering and logo on a black background. The correct answer is B. White lettering and logo on a green background. The non-flammable gas placard features white lettering and a logo set against a green background. This placard is used to signify the presence of non-flammable gases in a shipment, helping to alert others to the specific nature of the hazardous material being transported. Question 43. Associate the hazardous material with the appropriate class or division. Gasoline? A. Class 3. B. Class 1. C. Class 6. D. Class 8. The correct answer is A. Class 3. Gasoline falls under Class 3, which encompasses flammable liquids. This classification pertains to liquids that are capable of emitting flammable vapors and can pose fire hazards under certain conditions. Question 44. Match the hazardous material with its corresponding class or division. Battery acid? A. Class 1. B. Class 3. C. Class 8. D. Corrosive. The correct answer is D. Corrosive. Battery acid is classified as corrosive material, falling under Division 8. Corrosive substances can cause damage to living tissues and other materials upon contact due to their chemical properties.
Question 45. Where does the class information typically appear on a hazardous material placard? A. In the bottom corner. B. In the center. C. On the sides. D. At the top. The correct answer is A. In the bottom corner. The class information on a hazardous material placard is usually displayed in the bottom corner of the placard, indicating the specific hazard class or division of the material being transported. Question 46. For which type of hazardous material should loading only occur in closed cargo spaces unless the material is in fire, water-resistant packaging, and covered with a fire, water-resistant tarp? A. Class 1. B. Class 5. C. Class 9. D. Class 3. The correct answer is A. Class 1. Loading of Class 1. Hazardous materials, which include explosives, must be confined to closed cargo spaces unless the materials are appropriately packaged to resist fire and water and are further covered with a fire-water-resistant tarp. This precautionary measure helps prevent accidental ignition or leakage of these highly sensitive materials during transport. Question 47. Which fire extinguisher type is necessary for a placarded vehicle? A. A. B. B. C. 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 D. D. The correct answer is B. B. C. Placarded vehicles are required to carry a fire extinguisher with a minimum UL rating of 10. B. C. This type of extinguisher is suitable for combating flammable liquid fires. Question 48. Which types of fires are BC fire extinguishers designed to combat? A. Flammable metals and chemicals. B. Electrical and fuel spills. C. Cooking oil and grease. D. Paper and wood. The correct answer is B. Electrical and burning liquids. B. C. Fire extinguishers are suitable for extinguishing electrical fires as well as fires involving flammable liquids like gasoline, oil, and other burning liquids. Question 49. Is it true that the transportation of Class A and B explosives necessitates a steel floor liner of at least 1 16th of an inch thick? A. True. B. False. C. Partially true. D. Not specified. The correct answer is B. False. The transportation of Class A and B explosives does not require a steel floor liner of a specific thickness. Instead, there are specific requirements and regulations that must be followed for the transportation of explosives, including proper packaging, placarding, and securing within the vehicle. Question 50. What factor must you be aware of to determine the appropriate placard for your vehicle? A. Vehicle weight capacity. B. Weather conditions. C. Driver's license class. D. Material hazard class. The correct answer is D. Material hazard class. To properly select the placard for your vehicle, you need to be familiar with the material hazard class of the hazardous materials being transported. Placards indicate the type of hazardous materials on board, helping emergency responders and other drivers understand potential risks and hazards associated with the cargo. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you still need more practice, then check out these videos or click the first link in the description to get your cheat sheet, which will help you pass your CDL exam on your first try.